decided, uh, we took soundings and decided that we would change our plan for this session, uh, which is dangerous. Uh, we're uh, running nearly 10 minutes over, so it's going to be a tight session anyway, because I'm sure people uh, don't want to be uh, delayed on their journeys. We were going to, we, what we were going to do was to sort of hear some very, very quick um, thoughts from, uh, this is our team of co-investigators uh, uh, on the Creative Citizens Project, but um, by overwhelming demand, instead, we're going to ask you to speak uh, first. Um, so the, the, what uh, we had uh, discussed among ourselves uh, we would uh, do, um, try to do, would be to uh, say something about either an insight that you think you've clarified or uh, arrived at uh, as a result of the conversations of the last 48 hours, uh, or, um, you know, this is even better, um, a thought about the future of creative citizenship in your own work, in your own discipline, in your own institution, in your own setting, somewhere else that's nothing to do with you but you can see where it would be a good idea. Just a kind of future focused thought. Of course, having said that, you're free to say anything, uh, to uh, complain about anything, to uh, offer celebratory and joyful support uh, for anything. Um, uh, but uh, be warned, if you don't have a few things to say, they will come at you uh, like uh, a World War I trench packed with energy. Dima. Okay, I'm going to say something that I really like. Something that I didn't like so much and something for the future. How Fantastic. about that? So yeah, great, yeah. Okay. Good. So something that I, I mean, congratulations. I just wish I came to the UK two years and a half before and I was involved in this project way before. It was really brilliant to like have met everyone, so thank you. Um, something that I thought was really spot on, I tweeted it today, is like this, this is the first media conference that I'm at that is a conference, it's not an on-conference, so it has a very traditional <laughs> way of doing <laughs> conferences. But the session with Ian and John was, was really very interesting because it has these like, op but the brilliant thing is, this is the first media conference that I'm at where we speak about media and design at the same time. And um, I'm so happy that finally someone got it, that it's actually the right way to do media studies or design for social change or for other things. The thing that I think um, I felt could be, could work better is was, it was a conference on hyper-local media that was very hyper-local. So there were only one with Joe's session today, two sessions um, with uh, Rachel Anz. So very few sessions on things happening outside of the UK and I think we need to push ourselves as academics and researchers in the UK to look at what's happening beyond the borders of Great Britain. And um, um, for the future thoughts, I mean, I was just gonna speak to, because I work with J Dave and Jerome, and I really want us as a research center to get together, reflect on the experiences, what the things that you guys think worked and yep. the things that didn't work. And if there's anything happening with creative citizens after this, I would really would like <laughs> to be involved. So please right. let me know. Thank, Thank you, you very that's much. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's very, very, very generous, uh, Dima. Who else? Uh, hands? No? Yeah. Here. And then, uh, was that Mandy? Did you yeah. wave your hand? Yeah, Mandy. And then Mandy Doris, if you want to give Mandy a microphone, and we'll do one too. Uh, mine's in the nature of personal confession. Uh, I, I arrived at this conference a socialist and I'm leaving an anarchist. <laughs> yes! Oh, that's success. <laughs> that's success. Ma mainly as a result of my state of high infuriation at last night's debate. Uh, a line of men in suits <laughs> telling us that politics wasn't really going to be very interested in us unless we changed. And uh, it's also left me understanding that the kind of power line is about, is this kind of impermeable border between a kind of creative process, utility and management, bureaucracy and state. So there's that, that's what I'm going away to puzzle over. Do, do you feel, yeah, that's kind of uh, but do you feel potentially as a result of that motivated to kind of apply energy to destroying it uh, since you're now a revolutionary? Um, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep my powder dry on that. You're okay, yeah, no, you can keep your detailed plan <laughs> secret, yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, Mandy. Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, it's something about history and something about this moment that we're in. And um, so thinking about the Creative Citizens Project being sparked in part by that kind of wave of technology that we think of as wave, wave, Web 2.0, and around which many of us got very excited about ideas of you know, voice and who could get to speak and things. So it's thinking about the movement between that moment and the kind of nation state moment we're at now, where um, Jean spoke this morning about the kind of the platforms, those massive platforms being these kind of new nation states. Somehow that, that, that movement, meaning that I'm thinking much more about the creative citizens' work that we've been looking at, or people have been looking at in this project, in a much kind of think about it in a much longer historical perspective, that somehow that seems to force us both to think about the specificity of that moment, the nation states, the globalization issues, a particular problematic of all that but also to look, somebody asked the question about resources of hope this morning, you know, so reminding us to think about, uh, wider about some of those resources of hope and think about them more historically. And I think we have overlooked to some extent those histories of community media, let alone the much deeper histories of the cooperative movement and workers' education and things in some of these discussions. I feel, you know, they've been referenced, but I just feel now for myself, I'm going to be thinking much more about this in a bigger historical context. Mm, yeah, I, I, the, I like history. I love the history in Jean's talk. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, reassured that she's turning into a historian, but not <laughs> only a historian. OK, uh, who else would like to say? Jeremy. Uh, yeah, although I'm nominally the host um, at this conference, I have been a guest in my own house. And it's been very pleasant to let the uh, currents of the conference kind of flow over me. And think new thoughts. I think my big take out of the last couple of days is how creative citizenship is in a way a, a, um, a gentle assault on creative elites. So the news journalist, the industrial designer, these professional figures trained with a high degree of skill and know-how, they're being challenged uh, from a different angle. And it goes right back to Jeff Mulgan's um, talk at the beginning of the conference about more open democratic and social forms of innovation and getting away from, you know, he showed that photograph of Bell Labs and, you know, the big closed corporate labs. Um, and I, I suppose um, the thing that I want to ask this group this afternoon is, you know, now that we've done a conference, now that we've had a, had a project that has created a body of work, could we not make this event, you know, an annual or a biannual um, event, uh, a conference, it could pass around between different academic institutions or research centers. It could s invite new work, new speakers. It could be, uh, the hardest thing is to create a network. Um, I think this conference has begun to create a, a network, a community of practice. Could we not keep it going? Okay, uh, let's have a show of hands on, just kind of top of your head, you're not committing yourself, you're not signing up. Uh, uh, would that be an appealing idea, you know, half past three on a Friday afternoon? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so uh, it's, not, it's not unanimous, but it's, um, uh, it, there's, there's support for that. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, who else? Uh, or, or do you want to demand some performance out of these guys? Uh, no, we want more. We, we, yeah. I've just got a practical comment on that. It's to save Catherine from having to uh, remember the URL. In the last two hours, Natasha uh, from the RCA and myself have just made a, a virtual exhibition of the Creative Citizens Exhibition on Sticky World. So it's Creative Citizens or cc.stickyworld.com. I've just tweeted it, hashtag Creative Citizens. It is a, one of the tools you could use now to right. carry on the conversation, ask questions, leave ideas, just stick comments on the, uh, the exhibit, exhibits. If we missed exhibits out, then tell us because we can add them very easily. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, the further back there. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed the conference because of its attempt to uh, cross theory, uh, practice, and policy. Um, not necessarily always bringing those, you know, the discourses of each one uh, across, but it's been very, very good to be able to see these kind of glimpses uh, across those. But um, one thing that by this time on a Friday afternoon that um, uh, I feel that the theory strand of the conference has, uh, is underdeveloped. Uh, and specifically, I think we've not really heard um, any kind of understanding of, of what creativity itself is. There's a lot of evidence of, of its practice, but I don't think we've had much of a theorization of, of kind of creativity. 
Uh, and I think that, for me, couples with a big uh, problem in the, in the room, um, which I, th I just read across a whole load of things, is an under-theorization of representation. Now, I know that you know, that's a very academic response or a theoretical yeah, response, no, but I think so, yeah. those yeah. two yeah. things yeah. Have, have kind of been under, underpowered um, uh, and need to be there if you want to connect those three things. If you want to stay in the world of, and influence policy, if you want to uh, uh, influence agendas in terms of where money goes, then I think we do need to look at the problems and the crisis of representation. And I do think we need a better theoretical version of creativity. For me, I've heard creativity as a kind of, um, well, reflected in your kind of biographical um, performance as a kind of, um, you know, libertarian individualism is, that's one version I've heard. Yeah, no, it, well, it is only one version of it. But, but representation, you mean political representation? Well, no, I mean media and political. I see, OK, it, OK, know, okay both things. Yeah. They're both in crisis. The, the political machine is in crisis, but then so are the forms of uh, media representation. There have been presentations that kind of assume that representation and misrepresentation goes back to some kind of transparency. Yeah. Right. And yet media and cultural studies have for the last 30 or 40 years kind of dismantle that. Yeah, okay. Uh, m maybe John w uh, would like to say something about that in a minute. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, anybody else who would like to pitch in right now? Okay, in that case, uh, uh, well, John, what do you... Uh, I, I guess it was worth responding. Do I even like to turn around? You do, yeah, you do. It's worth responding, uh, um, partly because you mentioned the biographical bit as being a, a peon to individualism. Whereas in fact, uh, I thought the takeout was the opposite, that it was actually trying to say uh, we need to work in teams and groups. Yeah, uh, so, uh, you know, it's how you hear things, I guess. Um, but the two points about uh, uh, how we define creativity and, and representation are well made. And uh, the, feel, the feeling I have about it is that it's too soon, uh, that we need to get some stuff on the table and draw from that, rather than defining it in advance in a kind of Aristotelian way, and then saying, well, that's what we've found. Uh, because I think uh, creativity is under um, transformation, and uh, I have a, a, an approach to it, which is based entirely on systems theory and complexity theory, but which I didn't think was appropriate to uh, provide a disquisition on in this conference. However, you can read my forthcoming book, <laughs> Cultural <laughs> Science, <laughs> which is published next Thursday. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. so there, is, there is an attempt to make that, that shift. The thing on representation is really interesting because, of course, we are at the intersection of political representation and uh, semiotic representation and self-representation, and I just think that needs to be a problem before we provide some kind of definitional exit from it. Uh, so I'm, I'm really wanting to agree with you, but not to say it's about individualism or definition. I'm, I think it's about um, finding that there are problems with the terms that we bandy about and then trying to do something about that. Yeah. I mean, one thing that will definitely happen in the future, because uh, we are about to sign a contract to do it, uh, is, is a book on creative citizenship, which obviously will need to, uh, uh, to deal with these issues. Uh, uh, but it's a very fair comment uh, that they were not... Um, prioritised in, in the, the way we structured. Now, the, our co-eyes, who's going to go first? Come on, volunteer. Theo, uh, I'm you're volunteer. Because I would like just to respond to, or okay. respond to that. Or that. Uh, I agree with, with John's response, and it's interesting because originally I, I'm coming from complexity science background as well, uh, years ago, and uh, we used to have these conferences where it's about complexity science, and we spent days of discussing what is a complex system, what is it, without really getting into the actual discussion. So I, I agree with John's strategy, which is let it, let it run as it is, without discussing too much about what is creativity, even what is citizenship that much. Mm -hmm. And let's bring our examples, let's bring our, our experience, because we are coming from a very interdisciplinary background, and then we can have this experiment. Actually, we did have a, within our project this beautiful uh, workshop where we explore this, and it was fascinating uh, and contradicting, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, uh, do do you have a, a, a word for the future, Theo? That yes, you I want have to a word for the future. It is domain specific, um, uh, and uh, in some extent, for some of you, might be trivial. 
uh, and also for my background as a complexity uh, guy now that I introduce myself as a, it is trivial but uh, <laughs> well my, my background is in architecture and community-led design and uh, when I joined the project uh, this creative citizenship was quite interesting for me as a concept because it makes it make me combine two concepts that originally I thought that was disconnected that was the everyday creativity which in my domain it was something that we look at it but not connected with citizenship, citizenship and citizenship but then I started uh, realizing that there is something more on that and now I'm more and more thinking about this and that goes back to the history of my domain which is uh, it was based on three main principles that was community engagement trying to find tools and methods where you engage communities uh, community building uh, creates strength within this community and consensus building that was the three uh, principles that we were operating for all these uh, years in the in, in the context of urban planning and design and uh, and then with this uh, advent of social media and open data movement and open source movement there was new forms of uh, uh, creative acts within the public sphere, which obviously given new energy, new interpretation of what we think of community engagement and community building. But more importantly, and that's the thing that's happening, it challenged completely my assumption about what, who is leading this thing that we say community-led design and how this leading process is, is happening. And there are two extreme poles. Is the one, the community, that uh, you have a community, you work with this community, and you build a common vision, and you develop a common vision with this community, and that becomes a force for change. And then the other extreme, which is a network, a network of, con of people that have completely different values, completely different uh, uh, aspirations, and still, and it's amorphous and dynamic and without boundaries. And, and, and these two extremes is, for me, the big challenge for my discipline, how this is go together, or, or if these two realities go together. Uh, it's very domain specific, but that's uh, for me the new challenge. That and I does creative citizenship, in a word, does creative citizenship as an idea help you get there in the next phase of your own work? Yes, because yeah. it makes me challenge these assumptions okay. about this risk concept, basically challenge these assumptions that are underlying okay. this. Okay, so we're going to have to go fairly quickly because we don't want to overrun. Catherine, what, what, what's on your mind at the end of, uh, I mean, all this two days of talk and for you, uh, weeks of exhibition building? Okay, um, well then I think it's appropriate for me to say, I think the realisation from the last two days and then also from the whole project is that this whole thing is all about relationships with people. Um, I am... I mean, we've heard about creative citizens going out on their own. I think it's more exciting to explore what partnerships creative, creative citizenships can make. Creative citizens can make. Um, we have been exploring the relationship between creative citizens and universities, and there's been lots of complex things that have emerged, but I think that's one um, partnership. But I think relationships between creative citizens and um, organizations, the powers that make decisions at local or national levels, like I think following on from our policy conversation last night, I think we should really be thinking about how we can make these partnerships actually work constructively. And um, yeah, I just, I think that for me is the big thing. I think um, it's about pushing a bit more to make these partnerships work. And it does take time and it does take patience. And I just, um, yeah, I want to, I want to give it a, give it a go. Now, you and Dave, I think Dave Hart sitting next mm -hmm. to Catherine, uh, uh, um, you have a, a specific idea which you may or may not want to talk about now, but I invite you to if you'd like to about a sort of follow-on project. You've been talking about a follow-on project. Do you want to just give us a word about that? Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, uh, we're agonising over a case for support which uh, uh, has uh, start of the summer was on six and a half pages and low is about seven pages. That's the progress that is uh, uh, slow because we're trying to think about um, uh, how you bring this to what the research council's wanting follow-on projects to, to new audiences or new ways. You know, it's invariably uh, entitled a, a creative uh, citizens 
kiss or a roadshow, or it's a sense of gathering of what we've got so far and taking it to new places. That's the requirement in kind of follow on. Yeah, Although so Helen Thornham would just usefully made an intervention actually, you can slip in some interesting stuff around thinking through new methods in there as well actually. So um, uh, it, we're thinking about, you know, if it's follow on, you know, taking what we've got and bringing it to others, to new communities or new audiences. That's the that's where we are. It was mm -hmm. called an criticism under the radar. Yeah. Sort of about, yeah. well, in this project, we've managed to engage, what was it, about 10 different community groups through our variety pack. Mm. We managed to connect lots of different projects that you're all involved in and, and pull them together. And we just really thought it'd be quite interesting to take this debate to corners of the country we haven't managed to reach so far. And perhaps, as um, we've already been criticised for, perhaps it should go beyond the borders a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, John, do you want to um, say what's on your mind? Uh, yeah, but I don't have long enough to say what's on my mind. I, I think um, the first thing I want to say is uh, in relation to the criticism about uh, under-theorised, um, it's an embarrassment, actually, um, to do with the Connected Communities Programme. That actually, um, as the lead programmer, I couldn't work out how we would run the Ronciere seminar in a Connected Communities Programme workshop. So, because actually, the, the status of theory and of the, that kind of knowledge is radically challenged within the Connected Communities Programme. What you can do and the limits of what you can do is actually really interesting. And I haven't really thought it through other than have a vague sense of inappropriateness to have a bunch of Deleuzeans in a room somewhere doing their thing. God forbid. Um, so that was that's my that was my that's my sort of first response. To that is, it, it's, it, it's a, yeah. And I mean, actually, I think I think what John said there is is actually true. The alternative is that we need to think through uh, with the way we do our theorization in a way that's actually not about um, angels dancing on the head of a pin, and actually is uh, uh, comprehensible to people who, who aren't part of that world. And I'd love to. Uh, that's something that perhaps we should address and think about a bit more. And I so I take that that that, that criticism. Um, my, my, my reflection is going back to Ruth's point about the politicians last night, the wonks. It was a bit like the beginning of 2001 where the apes confront the monolith. It's just this immovable force that we had no way of having a conversation with and no contact with. But we're really creative apes messing around and chucking things around and actually managing in our process to turn this piece of bone into a 21st century spaceship. Um, at least that's what we thought we were doing. Um, that sense, we are completely irrelevant to that world. And yet we know that we, all of us, as activists and researchers, deeply embedded in networks that are very meaningful to the people who's, who, 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 who constitute them. So there's a complete mismatch. And that, that really, really struck me very hard, like it did you, Ruth. It didn't take me to anarchy, though. It took me to thinking actually of Theo's domain, complex systems. So when we're, talk, when we're challenged to talk about value, we frequently, I frequently rec resort to talking about, well, that va value is emerging through complex systems in these networks of creative citizenship that we're investigating. Value emerges through the action of these complex systems. And these complex systems are actually constituted by networks. But complex systems are not chaotic, actually. They have form and they have structure. And networks have form and have structure. And networks can be managed and networks can be intervened in. And our job is to work out how, as universities, we intervene in and structure the networks of creative citizenship that we think are meaningful. And that's our task, is to work out what's the role of the university and university knowledge in the structuring of those emergent, contingent, dynamic, and sometimes chaotic looking networks that don't add up to a pile of beans if you're a policy wonk from the Fabian Society, but we know are actually important. So that's our job, I think. And in terms of the future, I'm hoping that this group of people, the guest list, the attendance list, becomes the basis of a network, and that maybe uh, we just start a blog which we can actually start to contribute together some thoughts and reflections about creative citizens that we run together. I'm not volunteering to edit it before anybody says yes, because I know that I'm actually really bad at doing that work. Uh, but I'll volunteer to help run a conference in two years' time if someone <laughs> wants to. Uh, if someone wants to wants to form form a committee, he's good at that. Uh, he's good at <laughs> lots of things. Um, Carolyn, what what are your 
closing summative thoughts? Oh my God, yeah. Um, I think what was really interesting for me, uh, going back to what Jeff Rosen was saying about university being innovative or lacking innovation, is that actually the concept of critical citizenship was quite surprised. We seem to all be talking about the same thing, even though we are coming at it from a very different perspective. Some talk about home some talk about gardening, allotment, some talk about, about everyday culture and participation. For some of us, it's about you know a kind of non-technological critical citizenship. For, for others, actually, technology and creativity and citizenship, it's about informal critical network, like source bless and everything. But the same kind of overarching theme around that. But the challenge with this is you need a lot of multidisciplinary perspective to really understand the complexity of the phenomenon. And you can see it out in our team. So the project has been really interesting in that. And I can see that a lot of researchers in terms of presentation are actually trying to grapple and struggle with the multidisciplinarity of it. Because we operate in university, we still have a very strong sectoral and disciplinary focus and expectation in terms of publication, in terms of impact, in terms of the way we look at things. And I think this environment needs also to be recognized. And also the fact that when you actually research and actually work with creative citizen, you have a lot of activism. So you are involved in kind of this activism, but at the end of it, you are doing some kind of research. You are actually limited in the time of support you can give to those creative citizens afterwards. Not that they don't only necessarily need our support, but actually sometimes the mediation, the brokerage across art and science and planning and regeneration seems to quite important, but it's actually not there. So for me, there is something to rethink how you do those research and the kind of mm -hmm. constraint around those. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Katerina or Andy, who wants to go next? Oh, do you let them decide? <laughs> 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 Andy, yeah. tell us what to do here. Andy, yeah. Andy. I want to say something about the future of creative citizenship in, in, in relation to what I've been looking at for the last two years, which is hyperlocal community news. Um, and in relation to my um, position as an academic, and that ties up with some of the uh, discussions we've had about the nature and purpose of the university over the last few days. Um, one of the research questions that we set ourselves when we, when, when, when we came together in that sand pit um, was how, 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 how best to foster, support, and promote creative citizenship, if at all. Um, now, I've been extremely impressed by the richness, by the variety, by the commitment of the people I've been working with, totally bowled over by what they produce, the commitment to representing their communities affectionately, affectionately but critically, um, fostering active citizenship, challenging power, giving voice to the previously voiceless. And we have empirical evidence for all of this. Um, if you missed our session, in both large and, 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 and small ways. Um, but I've also been struck by the extreme precariousness and the extreme difficulty of, of, of what these local heroes do, um, often for free, often on a voluntary basis. Um, now, there are those who argue, some of them have said so here, that, that, that faced with a professional local news market in decline, as we are, we should step back, we shouldn't interfere, we should let a thousand flowers bloom, watch most of them die, and learn from the lessons that we, that we observe. My feeling is that this is reckless. Um, when you're dealing with a commodity, and it is a commodity like local, local news, that's lost most of its market value, that, but, but that's nonetheless actually vital to community life, to, to, to politics um, at a local level and, and, and a national level too. Um, when you're dealing with something that the, the, the economists call a public good, Something, something that we all need, but which the market can't provide in sufficient quality or quantity. But if, if you accept this, then, then, then what do we do, okay? Um, st stick to the horticultural metaphor. Um, I think that we need to build greenhouses, we need to build nursery beds to enable, to nurture, to foster those who are experimenting with, with various and new ways of sustaining local news and information for people in their communities. There are a few of these around at the moment, many of which we've heard about in the last few days. The Carnegie Trust's excellent scheme, Nesta's groundbreaking work, the training and policy achievements of, of talk about local, um, the Center for Community Journalism at Cardiff, which I'm very proud to be a part of. Um, but we need more, and, and it's my conclusion, I think, that, 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 that we need more money and from a range of sources in order to continue to expand the experimentation involved with this kind of work. Um, that's that's my thoughts for the future. Bo bid boldly into the future. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, 
Katerina. Where am I going next? I, you, you, you introduce me to the term co-creation yeah. in Birmingham, in, a, in the sand. Do you think I've learned anything? I, mean, <laughs> I, I think I've learned. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I think um, the way I think about it is very similar to what others have said and uh, what I got from the session. I think for me uh, the direction is that we need to understand a little bit more, um, to explore more the varieties of creative citizenship. Um, we did in our project quite a lot um, around thinking around the relationships between individuals and communities in this respect, which I was surprised that this didn't come up very much in, in the conference. Um, and we did think a lot about the relationship uh, between informal and professional creativity, and I commit that there's going to be some sort of output uh, discussing uh, relationships between everyday and professional creativity. Um, but I think, uh, and also what uh, from the sessions came out, uh, for me three dimensions for exploring creative citizenship and the practice of creative citizenship. One is better understanding and looking into more depth the motivations of the people engaged in these activities and the values they have and the different constitutions of the different communities and projects and um, how that affects their activities. Uh, the second is some sort of comparison between local movements and global movements. Um, and uh, we did say quite a lot in the local context, but uh, there's, um, I think, this element of comparison rather than. Um, and the third aspect is. Um, to explore uh, the different political and cultural contexts uh, that condition the types of creative citizenship, which relates to the previous um, thing. So um, how do the different economic conditions in different countries influence <coughs> what activities are happening or the different environmental uh, situations, uh, crises of any sort, social, uh, economic, so, yeah, that's my view of what we need to be doing more. Okay, we're almo almost out of time. Has anybody got a last word that they feel they haven't managed to get the day? Yeah, I was. Um, I, I just wanted to, to pick up on something in, in your talk, taken from Daniel Meadows, uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, for too long the professionals have had it their own way, and I thought, well, could we just apply it? And we have journalism have had it their own way, the planners have had it their own way, and... Uh, it reminded me in the <coughs> summer I went to see the Daniel Meadows exhibition in Birmingham, um, which was really good, and, and the photos are amazing. But actually, the exhibition has the uh, everything else. It has the uh, receipt for the repair to the bus on the journey. And it made me think, actually, uh, uh, galleries are quite good at uh, exhibiting that kind of stuff. Uh, and media studies is no interest in that kind of stuff, really. And you know, the Meadows uh, uh, is really about mobility. It's about the journey of going to these places and the exhibition kind of reminds you of the physicality of the journey and the difficulty of it, the, the amount you paid for the bus. And I, I think sometimes in, in particularly the area we've been studying, we, we forget about the bits in between really. Um, you know, I run a hyperlocal in, in Birmingham and so the bits that are essential to my practice are the bits I haven't done this week because I've been here. So I, I haven't walked the dog, I haven't done the school run. I mean, I'm not missed these things, they're chores. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, you know th that observation, that being in the space, and the mo the mobility is uh, uh, and the banality of those acts. You know the everydayness of the acts, which is a real theme. I think I've heard a lot around everyday, and uh, maybe less so about mobility. But it's kind of implied in some of the stuff in the exhibition, actually. I think mm -hmm. so. It strikes me as something around the way in which you might uh, uh, theorise about this uh, uh, our area, maybe others, but our area in, in going forward is to take a kind of uh, what Sean Moores and others have called a non-media centric approach to maybe think about how you look at journalism but you focus on uh, the bits in between and increasingly the bits in between are digital bits so there's a kind of everydayness to that digital participation which you know a, a Jean reminds us of and the sheer volume of that and how we make sense of that in the local and I've, I've made some kind of micro attempts at that in some of my own work but it's very difficult because of the the volume of it, we need a kind of 
uh, some of the great visualizations here we've seen in some of the work, uh, as well as maybe a more qualitative and attentive approach to the, the physicality of being in space and you know, mm. doing the walking about and you know, the stuff you do to arrive at the creative act. Okay, well, I began uh, uh, yesterday uh, by saying that I feel as if I can't move for creative citizens. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, the, the day before the conference, I was at an event uh, that I was just you know, a, a guest at, and I met um, a woman who'd started an organization called The Reader. Uh, and the reader uh, is a setup that takes its idea from uh, the value that all parents probably instinctively uh, know that they give to their children by reading aloud to them. Uh, but the reader is a program uh, which is now very large uh, all over the country, uh, which um, does reading out loud in informal groups for people who you would not normally expect to turn up to be read out loud to. Uh, uh, people with, uh, you know, often from you know, very challenging circumstances. Uh, and uh, uh, that, like any other creative citizen story, um, I think gives us uh, the thing that we have got that the politicians haven't got, uh, which is the ability uh, simply to decide uh, that we are going to do something uh, and we're going to do it in our way uh, uh, you know, and the permission that we need is only the permission of uh, you know, the people we're going to do it with um, uh, and I think it's that uh, permissiveness uh, around uh, creative citizenship uh, of course it's not the only thing you can call it uh, uh, Jean uh, did a lovely, a charming job of writing our language into her presentation. Um, uh, but of course it fits there very easily, uh, but you can make the presentation without the language. Um, uh, we, uh, I, uh, Sophia, who I had to leave uh, uh, but yesterday meant, you know, used the word movement, um, I think that there is something here which uh, does connect quite quickly uh, for uh, people who like to do this kind of thing and there are millions of them uh, in the UK and there are billions of them uh, around the world uh, and you know, uh, it's not work that has to be done uh, but it's work that can be done uh, and uh, that, uh, that for me is the, um, the kind of uh, underlying uh, motivation and I find that creative citizenship with hindsight, I realise that's what I was doing 30 years ago, uh, uh, but I hadn't, you know, nobody had thought of the term then. Uh, so one, you can kind of retro theorise it as well as theorise it for the future. But I'm not very good at theory anyway. I always, I always turn to my friend here, uh, my friend over there, or Theo, <laughs> for a bit of theory. Uh, keep me going. Uh, that uh, is it, uh, John. You wanted to. Uh, uh, so I, I, well, I, I wanted to um, propose a vote of thanks, actually, to, 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 to a number of people, which we took, we did some of this last night in the dinner, so I don't want to go over that, really, but the conference committee for supporting me in the programming effort and doing all the peer reviewing, you guys for coming and turning up and speaking and being so engaged, the RCA, who've been absolutely amazing. I mean, it's so, I can't tell you how great it is to, to, to work with the RCA here. They've been fantastic. They've been so supportive. Uh, Jeremy's been really helpful in facilitating that. Catherine has been an absolute queen of the RCA, and she's run a crew for us that have just been a delight. But the person that I really want to thank, that I haven't had a chance to thank so far, um, there's an invisible hand that's been behind everything that's happened in the last two days, and indeed has been holding my hand for the last six months. And her name is Hannah Leverton, and she's over there sitting next to Jeremy. Hannah. <laughs> if any of you ever need a stage manager who is also a goddess, please contact Leverton Events, because she'll be ready and willing, I'm sure, to facilitate in the most amazing way. She's been brilliant. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, she, she did, however, abscond for the trivial reason of going to get married. Uh, <laughs> you know, here we are, got a conference to organise. She didn't drop a single beat. She got married as well 
as uh, uh, producing the conference and running the conference. Uh, I'd also uh, like to thank uh, all of our partners, some of whom are still here, one or two have been in and out. Uh, the, our long list of partners, uh, which um, uh, we mention in every publication that we do, so I won't uh, list them all, but uh, obviously you can't do the kind of work that we have been doing uh, without uh, fantastic partners, and we've had uh, everything that we could have wished for from our partners. Um, uh, but most of all, we'd like to thank you. Thank you very much for uh, spending your time with us. Thanks for sharing your ideas uh, and your thinking with us. Uh, we will be in touch with you. Uh, if uh, you uh, remain in touch with us, we will be very, very pleased indeed. Thank you very much and have a good weekend.